Hi everyone, um, I'm Tony. This is SV Tapacha. She's a cruising sailboat, 32 foot cruising sailboat, built out of plywood, sheathed in epoxy, and we're in the process of building her. These videos are all about that process, the build of this boat. Um, and it's a mess everywhere I look. <laughs> now, weather outside is quite cold, but luckily we, we got the closing in done in time. So I'm starting to move in, start inside. Just started on the galley. We'll have a look at that later. One or two other things we need to have a quick look at first. Um, but perhaps before I get to that, um, perhaps there's a couple of things I'd like to say, which are um, in response to comments. You know, I, I very much appreciate your comments that you, you leave under these videos. Um, I try to answer them all. Um, and yeah, a couple of comments that, that people ask me to respond to, <coughs> if you'll excuse me. Uh, first one, um, somebody asked me, how do I have the skills, or how did I get the skills to build a sailboat? And that's it's rather an interesting question. Um, and I guess the answer, in a way, is that I don't think I have, which is, which is why I've decided to build this boat. This, this boat's a very, very easy to build sailboat. It's a, you know, easy to build cruising sailboat. Hard chined, you know, the sections are flat, so, so the skills required are not enormous. Beyond that, I've just, just spent my life building things. You know, I've worked in construction, um, I've worked in, in auto repair and, and uh, fabrication. Um, I've worked in various lines. I worked in boat maintenance. And, um, you know, the skills that you pick up as an ordinary working person can be applied to a simple boat like this. There's, there's nothing difficult about it, really. Um, like anything that you build, um, same with home renovation. You, it's most important that you that you have control over your muscles. That you can move your arms in a straight line. That you use your eyes as you work. So you so you, you watch what you're doing and don't just sort of madly remove materials and then realise ah it was too much. You know it's 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 just about thinking as you work. And the other thing that I do rather a lot of is I've I've spent a lot of time over the years is reading up on materials and their properties. I think the knowledge of mater materials and properties is essential. And uh, nowadays, of course, we have the marvelous resource that is YouTube, and, and there are YouTube videos of all sorts of things. You know, if you want to learn how to, how to clad something in glass fiber and epoxy, look at a YouTube video. You know, if you want to learn how to, how to rip planks out of a tree trunk, you could look at a YouTube video. There are YouTube videos for everything when I needed to repair my vacuum cleaner a while back, I just looked at a YouTube video, how to do it. You know, it's, it's a marvelous resource, isn't it? Um, so that's the answer, really. I, I am a normal working person uh, with, with you know, ordinary maintenance skills. Um, and by choosing a fairly easy to build boat, those normal maintenance skills are, are enough to build this boat. And, and anybody who's capable with their hands could build a boat like this I'm quite sure with a bit of reading a bit of research and thought yeah that's my answer to that question the other comment I wanted to respond to this week was was I've had a few requests to to give my thoughts on working with black locust wood as you know I've, I've used it I've really don't, I don't want to use tropical hardwoods or new cut tropical hardwoods. I'm, I'm okay with recycled. Um, so I've avoided that by going for black locust, which is otherwise known as rabini or rabinia uh, or false acacia. Um, and yeah, I've been asked for my thoughts on the wood because um, apparently somebody was inquiring at their local wood yard and they were told that it's gnarly, it's cross grained, it tends to split and warp. So as you've seen, I've shown in the videos, I buy it rough sawn, um, two inch thick planks, rough sawn out of trees. Uh, and then I just mill it on my very, very cheap table saw. Um, I find it easy to work with. It's not too hard. It doesn't blunt the saw blade any more than any other wood. You know, obviously they vary woods to woods, but years ago I did a bit of work with elm. I built a table and, and, a, and a lamp out of elm. Um, that was much harder, much harder. Need much sharper tools, blunted the tools much more. So it, you know, it's softer than elm, certainly. 
Cross-grained, yes it is, a bit, but I, when I'm planing it, I tend to use a, a power plane, which works much better on cross-grained cross wood. A sharp power plane, set fine, planes it fine, and then finish it off with a sander, comes up lovely. Uh, shakes, the boards that I buy do have some shakes at the end, or splits at the end, from the drying. Um, I just mill it accordingly to, to take them out. One or two bits I have to sort through the wood and throw them out because there are shakes in there that I don't like the look of. But the vast majority of the boards I buy are usable. I find it easy to work with. I, I really have no issue working with Black Locust. I would certainly do it again. Um, in terms of the colour, it comes up a sort of light teak. Um, when it's varnished, it will look very much like a light teak. And according to the book and the encyclopedia of wood and the properties, it should be very durable. So. I'm entirely happy with it. Enough talk, let's have a little look around at what we've been doing and I think we need to start up here. Let's cut for a minute Gary. The hatch turtle is in position. Um, the weather's been so cold. I coated it with a thin coat of epoxy. It feels dry now but when I put it in position it was distinctly sticky still so I put these, these bits of bubble wrap plastic between the two sections just to stop them gluing themselves together because um, this will be screwed or bolted in position with, with metal brackets from the inside but um, I do want to be able to if need be to undo those and remove it to access the, the you know any work I might need to do on the hatch or runners or whatever so as I say sat in position looks good I like it um, let me just back up a bit and pull the hatch shut as far as I can in this you see how that works? Um, I hope it's been obvious for weeks how it's going to work, but the, this is the sliding part of the hatch. Simply slides under the turtle there, and, you know, with stops both ends. Stops on the forward end, or the pulling it aft as the case may be, and stops at the open end. Come out well. Um, I'm going to clad the top here in, in black locust boards. Still, but wait for the spring for that. It can stay like this for now. It's, it's waterproof, protecting the place. Waterproof for now, and now for the sort of waterproof we need in here. It is very damp in here. The, if the shed is full of pearls, or the roof is full of pearls of water, and they drip every now and again. Um, but then sailing's a water sport, isn't it? And the boat has to be up to dealing with some water. And it is. But that's a hatch turtle in position. Come out well, I think. Yeah, as I say, managed to get it closed up enough, so we're down in the, made a start on the galley, which is quite pleasing. Say something quickly about the lighting in here. I've ordered some new lights to, to illuminate the place better, but they haven't come. So we're still on the lights that we had. I know it's not optimal. Um, hopefully next week they'll be here and I'll get them in and we'll have some better lighting. But it's what we've got for now. So, galley, yeah. First section's room, um, with a double sink, small camping sink, stainless, um, just roughing it out at the moment. And then I've got two of these. These are, were beer pumps actually, um, but I had them on the old boat as water pumps, and they work very nicely as water pumps. And I've got the, other, got the beer pull handles, you know, the pint pull handles for ale. Um, I should mount two of them in here, one for fresh water, one for salt water. And these pumps come in down there somewhere. And then with the, the pipe pour handle and, uh, and these spouts, which need a bit of a clean up, but these go out of 45 euro each. I've got three of them, ridiculous price, ridiculous price. But anyhow, these spouts come in here, one for fresh, one for salt, a bit the other way around, I think, fresh, salt. Um, yeah, and that would be the water supply. So no pressurised water, hand pumps for the water in here, uh, and only cold as well. Cold fresh, cold salt. Um, if you want hot water, you boil a kettle. In the heads, you can have one of these spouts and a foot pump on the floor. Foot pump, obviously on the floor. Where else? Um, just for fresh water, because obviously you want to be able to wash your hands, don't you? So you need to pump with your foot. You can't. So that's what the three spouts are for, two here, one in there. Um, and yeah, just I've, I've got one of these pumps apart 
next door. This one I've had apart as well. Needs a bit of a service, but they're amazing pumps. Really good quality, and I think you can't get them anymore. But as you see, making the start, um, it will be a, a, a sort of a C-shaped, U-shaped galley. This one's not coming out quite as far as there because one day a mast will be in there and you need room to walk through like that. Uh, early days, but um, I spend a lot of time measuring things and, and thinking about it. The stove, diesel stove is going to come in here somewhere, um, but it's going to work. It's going to work and I'm now to the stage of cutting pieces of wood and fixing them in and uh, that's very pleasing. This is the, the upper washboard, as you can tell, that's fairly obvious. I've just put a bit of fill around it, planed it up to shape, made sure it fits in the, in the slot, put a bit of fill around so it's, it's a bit sticky and horrible. But uh, sit that back down, leave it to dry. But that's basically done. Basically done. There you go, something like that. There we go. Um, there's a final sand up and a, and a coat of thinned epoxy to seal it, then that's finished. Yeah. 
All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, and I'll see you next time, I guess. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, um, hit the subscribe button. See you next time. Bye.